Hey everyone, welcome to the 65th edition of the Animated Girls Profile Confidential. And to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Scooby-Doo franchise, and I can't believe I never did an episode of the Animated Girls Profile Confidential on her, but as you can see in the title below, yes, I am here to talk about Daphne Blake. Yes, we are here to talk about Daphne Blake. And you want to talk about a character that's gone through a huge development in character throughout the 50 years of the Scooby-Doo franchise. Daphne is one of those characters, and if not the character. The reason being is because when Daphne first debuted along with the rest of the Mystery Inc. gang and Scooby, of course, back in the Where Are You uh, series in 1969 to 1971, she was looked at back then as a character that was not only a damsel in distress, but she was looked at as a character that would get herself and the gang in trouble. Thus, she was dubbed the nickname, or given the nickname, Danger Prone Daphne, DPD for short. And the reason Daphne was given this, um, was given this uh, nickname because, like I said, she would always find a way to get herself or the gang in trouble. She, and, she would be, and she would do this by basically accidentally setting off traps uh, wherever they were. Whether they were traps where they fell through floors, they were traps where she would, step, she would step backwards and she would step on a trigger or something. Whatever kind of trap scenario there was that they can get themselves into, Daphne at that time would find a way to accidentally get them in, into it. Now, she would keep this nickname up until I think uh, the Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo show around 1979. That would be the last time I think any episode would reference her as Danger Prone Daphne. And the reason I say this is because the nickname would stick with her even through the new Scooby-Doo movies run, the Scooby-Doo show, and then, like I said, uh, part of the um, Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo show in 1979. Now, just like Fred and Velma, Daphne would take a bit of a hiatus between, the 19, between 1980 and around 1983. Or oh, actually, 81 to 83, if I'm to be corrected. Because it was around this time that the creators at Hanna-Barbera decided to kind of change up the Scooby-Doo formula and go with more of a animated short-like um, environment. They would also pair Scooby-Doo up, as I mentioned in my other video, where I talked about the 50th anniversary of Scooby-Doo and my history as a fan. They would pair the Scooby-Doo show up with other cartoon characters like Richie Rich uh, and a few others. I think even the puppy, you know, characters like that. It wouldn't be until about 1983 where we would see a return kind of to the old formula. Because it was around 1983 where the all-new Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo show would be presented and Daphne would make her return. Now, some might argue or ask, why was it Daphne that made her return and not Velma? I think because of the fact that Daphne was the kind of character that if you're going to attract young girls to a franchise like Scooby-Doo, or to a, a show like Scooby-Doo, you need someone that they can actually look up to and they could see a bit of empowerment into, but also kind of see that femini fe femininity, easy for me to say, radiating, radiating from, radiating from. Again, easy for me to say. But yeah, they, basically they wanted uh, a character that young girls could watch and relate to. And even though Velma would have been great, there's no doubt, v Daphne was the better choice. And I think this is also at a time this was also done at a time where you saw other characters that had a similar figure, no offense, like Daphne, getting some of the spotlight in other shows. And Hanna Barbera decided, you know what? We could do that too, and we'll do it with Scooby-Doo. 
And it proved to be a success because the all-new Scooby-Doo Scrappy-Doo show got a second season under the title The New Scooby-Doo Mysteries. And then that was followed by the ever-popular and controversial 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, which earlier this year got a full-length feature film follow-up and sequel that focused on concluding that story arc and the main characters that were focused on when it came to the Mystery Inc. gang was again, of course, Daphne, Shaggy, and Scooby. And it was during this time, during the all-new Scooby-Doo, the, during the all-new Scooby-Doo Scrappy-Doo show slash new Scooby-Doo mysteries slash 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo run that Daphne got a huge a huge jump in character development, a huge development in character, as well as she got a new look. I mean, her new look basically consisted of what many consider almost like a hybrid of the April O'Neil look, but it was more of an 80s look at that time for Daphne, and she paid homage of that, paid ho- and she paid homage to that, I should say, homage to that uh, in the in the movie earlier this year. Now, I know I sound like I'm rambling a little bit and falling over my words. I do apologize. I am doing this on the fly and uncut and unscripted. Yeah, but like I said, her design was very similar to what you would see April O'Neil have in the Ninja Turtles cartoon uh, later on. And basically a lot of what the female characters at that time in a modern setting, setting, I should say, animated-wise, would have as well. Now... Daphne, of course, would get another character change and design a little bit uh, the following year when they decided to kind of try out something that they've been doing with a lot of their um, franchises at that time. And that is de-age the Scooby gang, the Mystery Inc. gang, to basically pre-teens. They had pre-teens as the Mystery Inc. gang. And Daphne was still looked at as being a little bit more competent, but at times a little bit more snooty and a little bit more like, hey, I'll get my butler to do this here and there for us, da, da, da. But she would be the one to supply the Scooby Snacks. And this character was cool. This this side of her was okay because growing up around the age of 12 or 13, you would expect someone like Daphne to be like, hey, I'll... I don't mind doing all this, but I'll have my butler do certain tasks I won't. So, you know, there you go. Um, We wouldn't see a return to how Daphne really was or to what Daphne could be until 1999, until 1998, actually. I think it was around, yeah, 98, 99, when we had the release of the first of the traditional yearly Uh, direct-to-video Scooby-Doo movies with Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. And you want to talk about a huge development for the character. This was one that was well needed. Uh, She obviously was very... She was basically portrayed to be very competent. You know, she could take care of herself, stuff like that. And I like the fact, I love the fact that they kept a trait about her that was developed in the mid-80s with the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries slash all-new Scooby-Doo Scrappy-Doo Show slash 13 Goes to Scooby-Doo. And that is the fact that just like Shaggy and Scooby, she believed in the supernatural and that it only would take the su- an experience with the supernatural to make her friends realize that there is realism, there is actual fact to what she, Shaggy, and Scooby believed in. And she would have huge development throughout. Now, true, there were times, depending on who wrote the direct video movies later on, where it felt like her character was kind of, uh, you know, regressing, kind of going back to the old Daphne. But there were times they tried to keep her in a sort of a balance of, okay, here's Daphne of now, and we're going to balance it out with traits of Daphne of the past. So, overall, Daphne had a very interesting development in character, especially when the movies came around. And speaking of movies, it would be in 2002 and in 2004 where Sarah Michelle Gallagher 
or Sarah Michelle Gellar would portray Daphne on the big screen. And Sarah Michelle Gellar did a tremendous job, in my opinion. She did a tremendous job with Daphne. I mean, I, I, cannot, I cannot stress how good Sarah's performance was. I mean, you truly believed. I mean, here's the thing. People say that when you look at Logan, when you look at Logan, or not Logan, but you look at Hugh Jackman, you believed he was Wolverine. That despite any of the roles Hugh Jackman would get, that when, he, that when you would see him in the X-Men, you would see Wolverine. You would see Wolverine. You wouldn't see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine slash Logan. You would not see that. You would see Wolverine. Period. And that's how I think myself and a lot of people felt about Sarah Michelle Gellar's performance as Daphne. That you didn't see Sarah Michelle. No. You saw Daphne. And she did a great job with Daphne in both incarnations. I really, really respect what she did with her. Um... And I might be in the, major in the minority, but I don't think I am. Because, again, when you saw her, you saw Daphne. And I like the fact that they sprinkled a lot of the development that Daphne had in animated form and kind of sprinkled that in and influxed that in to the live-action version that Sarah did in the movies. Now... Now, afterwards, we had, of course, during that time run of the live-action theatrical films, we had the presentation of What's New Scooby-Doo, and this really helped develop Daphne in a big, big way. Because it kept, to me, it kept that development that she, has earned, that she earned in the 80s and throughout even the directed video films, it kept it with her. It kept her being competent, not always get, not always, if, if, if at all, getting um, everybody in trouble. She was treated as an equal. She was treated as an equal. And what I liked about this, too, this was what's really interesting. They did an episode, I can't think of the episode, but they were in a toy area, a toy store or a mall. They were in a toy store or a mall. I can't think of it, where they decided to kind of switch things up when it came to splitting up the gang. So guess what happened, and I loved this. I loved this. They decided to switch things up, right, to kind of spice things up, see how things could be done differently. They put Shaggy with Fred, and they put Scooby with Daphne and Velma. And I loved it. I was like, yes, this is what we need to see. This is what we need to see. I love it. And Daphne as a character in What's New Scooby-Doo really was what was needed for the character. But then speaking about Daphne's character in an animated series, how about Mystery Incorporated? Now, Mystery Incorporated turned out to be one of those series that you just had to watch to see what happened next because it, because it had an overarching story arc that went from episode to episode. And every episode was treated as a chapter. It was treated as a chapter. Thus, the show itself was treated like a novelization. That's how it was treated. And it may, and it's because of the, and it was because of the way it was formatted in that way that made it a huge success. It made it a huge success. And Daphne's character was actually written very competently. It gave her a decent family origin and background. A little different than what we've seen before, but definitely very well done. It helped her character grow, especially when it came to her relationship with her friends and with, with Fred and, and all of them. So it was her character in Mystery Incorporated was really well done, in my opinion, and I truly respect that. You know, because it was a hybrid of, okay, here's a little... Because like I said earlier, her portrayal in Mystery Incorporated, just like in some other portrayals, was a hybrid of what you had in the past and what you had currently. And I enjoyed that. I appreciated that. I mean, I think, I think it was Gary... Um, Gray Dis 
great Desalia, Desalia, great Desalia, I think that's her name, did a tremendous job with Daphne in this version. I think she voiced her in Mystery Incorporated, I'm not really sure, but she did a great job, there's no doubt. No doubt about it. I don't know how Daphne is portrayed right now in uh, Scooby-Doo Guess Who, Who, but I can tell you this. The way she was portrayed in Be, School, Be Cool Scooby-Doo, uh -uh, never again. Never again. How she's treated in Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, or Guess Who Scooby-Doo, have to wait and see. have to hear what people have to say on that, but... Overall, Daphne's character throughout the 50-year run of Scooby-Doo, the Scooby-Doo franchise, really has gone through a lot and has really developed into a character that we can respect and appreciate. And because of that, has gone on to be one of the most popular characters in the franchise history. She has. It's no wonder, I think, it's no wonder, honestly, it's no wonder that when they, it was... When it came time to choose characters to uh, bring back to join up with Scooby, Scrappy, and Shaggy, that they went with Daphne instead of Velma. So really, really cool to to uh, overall just really cool to see that, and it's because of that she got the development that was well needed, and that development continues to this day. How she's going to be portrayed in Scoob, the upcoming movie, I don't know yet. But I'm really looking forward to seeing how, you know, who voices her character and how, they, how well they bring her to life. Uh, but overall, that's really all I could say about Daphne. I mean, I mean, one of the things about Daphne, too, that really got people, that gets people talking is her love interest, her romantic side, you know, and who she ends up with. And even though in the franchise, throughout some majority of it, she's always ended up with Fred, there was a time, and believe it or not, there was a time, and it was even, I think, because I think the people that do these movies at times, these Scooby-Doo directed video animated films, I think they know this, but there are numerous times in those films, I can't think of which ones they are, there's numerous times uh, in even What's New Scooby-Doo and Mystery Incorporated, even though one scene was by accident, because both were kind of like drugged or something, I don't know. But there have been, but you can thank, you can thank all new Scooby-Doo Scrappy-Doo show slash new Scooby-Doo Mysteries slash 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo for this. Because a lot of fans noticed this. That it seemed that during that period, and someone, and it's now somewhat Easter egged and referenced throughout. Scooby, not Scooby, but Shaggy and Daphne were an item. Again, we know Fred and Daphne are the primary item for the rest of the franchise, depending on who writes the episodes of the shows. But. For a time, and again, it's referenced in Easter Egg in the movies and some of the shows, Shaggy and Daphne were an item to the, in, in the eyes of many fans. I think they even referenced it and teased it and used it as some kind of acknowledgement in the Be Cool Scooby-Doo series. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. But there were a lot of moments. I think there was even one movie that kind of had Daphne helping Shaggy out a lot because of certain situations, getting him prepared and stuff. So to me, the creators, the writers, they knew. They knew that fans acknowledged this uh, romance, supposedly, between Shaggy and Daphne that occurred between the night in the mid, the early to mid 1980s. From all new Scooby Doo to Thirteen Ghost. So, overall, though, guys, um, I can't really say more about Daphne than what I've already said. So, that's really about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the 65th edition of the Animated Girls Profile Confidential on Daphne Blake in time to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Scooby Doo franchise. Let me know what you all think down below. Comment if you like. I'd love to hear what each and every one of you have to say about it. What are your thoughts about Daphne? And I will talk to you all later. God bless. Take care.